So I love traditional lasagna because it's got that meat sauce. It's got that nice, rich tomato sauce. And of course it's got the meat and come on, we cannot forget the cheese. And I think the shortcut that I took with the noodles for me worked out perfectly. Give it a try and let me know what you think. Anyway, uh, mm. Amy and I'm in my little kitchen and it's kind of one of those days that I just felt like lasagna. In fact, I am going to be making two lasagnas. Um, I don't know about you, I didn't, I didn't have lasagna a lot growing up and I think one of the reasons that was is because my mom worked, of course my dad worked, all of us kids were in school and everything and it is a little time consuming maybe especially if you do everything um, by hand or for less convenient. So if you're making lasagna and you, use, and you use a good jar of marinara sauce, go ahead, feel free, do it. Um, I go ahead and shred my own mozzarella cheese. I put my glasses here too, and my own Parmesan cheese. And of course, I'm making my own sauce, but for convenience wise, I just feel like these cheeses melt a little better than your pre-packaged shredded cheese. Uh, but feel free to go and use them. It still works, it's still good, it's still tasty and everything. So, but anyway, I didn't grow up a lot having lasagna. And I used to always remember like going out to a restaurant and getting lasagna or Italian restaurant or you know all those potlucks or church functions or whatever you may have attended you know i would get lasagna that way but of course ever since i uh, got married had kids and everything i started making lasagna myself because i thought how cool you know so this is what we're going to do for the first one it's more of a traditional lasagna it's got your meat sauce it definitely has a lot of herbs in it um, I have, I'm, I'm not a fan and I'm not sure I would, but I know some people who have either put bacon or uh, pancetta into it and, you know, fried that up to get that, uh, crisp that up to get that little extra flavor and everything. I've known, in fact, I did make it one time. I've also added carrots to this as I made the sauce. It just adds more flavor, more depth, more, um, you know, uh, just creates a lot of good, good goodness uh, into the sauce, but I decided not to do that here. Instead of white sugar, I'm gonna taste the sauce, but instead of white sugar, I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit of brown sugar. I, for me, it, uh, brown sugar has a tendency to be a little less sweet, but it still gives you that sweetness to kind of balance all of the acidity that's going on here. And this time around, yes, I'm even gonna, dribble in a little bit of red wine. So, of course, since I'm making lasagna, come on, people, we gotta, we gotta have a little sip of red wine here and there, so ciao. I, I don't even know what, it, in it, I just got back from Italy, too. I don't even know what the, um, <laughs> what the Italian word is. You know what, maybe on the next, you know, thing, I'll let you know what it is, but anyway, let's get going. So before I mix up the ricotta cheese, I know you can use ricotta or um, I would probably get the small curd cottage cheese instead of the large. I think cottage cheese is a little too wet than the ricotta. So I, I stick with the tradition. I, I stick with ricotta. I'm gonna add a little parm to it, the egg, just a little bit of salt, <coughs> maybe, and I'll go ahead and chop up some parsley. But anyway, let's get going. So first of all, we're gonna start off with the meat. So I have a pound of ground beef and I've got a pound of ground pork. And so I'm gonna go ahead and use up a little bit, not use up, I'm gonna go ahead and add some of the herbs and spices in here to you know, get that depth, that flavor. But if you wanna use a pound of pork sausage in it, go ahead, tell you the truth, the pound of pork is all that I had in my uh, uh, refrigerator or freezer. So that's what I'm using. I'm just gonna uh, add a little bit more of oregano, um, 
just a little hint of rosemary. I'm even gonna add a little bit of fennel. What else do I have here? Uh, why can't I think? Oregano, thyme, and uh, a little bit of salt, pepper, stuff like that. So we're gonna be at the stove for a little bit here. So let's get going. Okay, sorry about that. Before we head on over to the, uh, the stove, I forgot to do the garlic. We gotta have garlic in lasagna, don't we? Of course. So I'm just gonna kind of slice this up a little bit and kind of mince it. Um, you know, I mean, I don't know. I th garlic. Garlic should be in most anything. But the, one of the reasons I'm making two lasagnas is that, you know, some of the people that I'm having, family that I'm having over here, don't exactly eat meat or less of it, or they don't eat beef. And so, again, a lot of these dishes that I make, it's been so long since I've made them. So I'm gonna go ahead and make a seafood lasagna. So that's gonna be your bechamel or white sauce. And with cheese and everything, but I think I'm gonna put salmon, shrimp, uh, salmon, salmon, shrimp, maybe some clam meat. Um, I do have scallops, but I think I'm going to not do scallops. I might do a white fish, though. So anyway, the whole point being is I'm going to do this first one, the more traditional, you know, beef, ground beef, the tomato red sauce, and all that other good stuff. Then I'm going to make a, uh, a seafood one. So Molly and Joel came into town, and of course, we're always so excited when, they come, that when they're able to come into town. And so we definitely try and all get together and... Um, and I think most of the kids will be there with all the grandkids, so you know me. Of course I'm in my happy place. So I'm just trying to mince up this uh, garlic as much as I can. And I think that'll be good. I'm just going to put it in here. And of course I went ahead and chopped the onions ahead of time because people, look at me. Half my makeup's gone. It makes my eyes water so bad. And kind of like burn or whatever. Okay, let me... Oh, wait. Do I have... Oh, yeah. Um, I forgot my other big can of crushed tomatoes. So, yeah, that's right. I'm doing one 28-ounce 28, 28 can of crushed tomatoes. I went ahead and did that instead of my um, Mazzano tomatoes. I didn't... I didn't feel like doing, using my immersion blender and having to do that. So I'm using one 28 ounce can of crushed tomatoes, six ounce can of tomato paste, and just one average can, probably 14 ounces of tomato sauce. That'll create your really, you know, good sauce. So I'm making my own marinara sauce. And of course with a little red wine, so I'm gonna try and let this sauce cook if you've got the time, let it cook for as long as you want, like three hours. It'll be great. All that depth of flavor and all mingling in, to, in together. And uh, some of the stuff can, uh, the water in the content can evaporate a little bit. I just think it's good. I only have about an hour, so I'm really only going to cook the, the sauce for about an hour. Which I think it'll be fine, too. Okay, let me get all my herbs and spices over here. Let's do that. Let's see, what else? I don't think I need the parm. I'm gonna bring over the brown sugar just in case. I'll bring over the garlic. Ha! Huh. By George, I think I've got it. So let's, uh, let's head on over to the stove. Okay, I have this pan heating up here a little bit. I'm just gonna Turn up the heat a little bit, add a little bit more of olive oil. Whoa, my topper almost came off and plopped right into the pan. And after I get this, uh, the meat sauce going, I'm gonna show you a little thing that I have read online a couple of places. And so I'm gonna try that and how to cook the lasagna noodles a little bit differently than the traditional way. We'll see how it goes. Okay, well, this is a good spoon, I guess. Kind of 
I'll use this one. Okay, I'm gonna add in my one pound of lean ground beef and one pound of ground pork. Oh dear. I don't know what to do with the bowl. I'm gonna definitely go ahead and salt this. Once I break it up is when I'll add the onions. Boy, I hope I have a big enough pot. Yeah, I'll tell you too, that I, I don't know why sometimes I, I don't have that right, but sometimes I think my depth perception and my visual, my bracelet gets so hot over the heat. Um, I don't have like depth or perception, which is as good as I used to or something. I don't know, because it seems like I have a hard time judging the size of pan I need and quantity. We're gonna get the onions in there. And this will take some time. This will probably take about 10 minutes to kind of, you don't wanna cook it too fast and the meat gets brown on the outside, but it's not really cooked on the inside. And I'm hoping this doesn't have a lot of fat that I need to drain off. Cause I think when everything kind of goes in layers and cooks, oh, the flavor. All right, let's see here. Um, I don't want to add that. Just a little more salt because I added the onions. Just a little bit there. That's enough. A little bit more pepper. And just before this meat is done cooking is when I'll add the herbs and the garlic. While I still have a little bit of pink in the meat because I don't want the garlic to burn, but I still want the meat to be able to get all that flavor. All right. For some reason, I don't know what it is, guys. I am, I think I'm missing something. It's kind of crazy. Oh, I will add the fennel though. Do I have fennel here? I didn't bring fennel. Okay, I'm gonna go get the fennel. Because the pork, the ground pork, really doesn't, it's not like pork sausage, I still wanna create a little bit of that Italian sausage by using herbs to it. So let me go get the fennel. Okay, I got the fennel. What was in here? I think the onions were in here. Let me see if I can get a spoon and... Kind of mash up the fennel a little bit, so I'm saying at least you know, teaspoon. And I want to just kind of break up the fennel a little bit so it'll create that flavor. I mashed it up. Use a, pet, a pistol or and a mortar. You know that'll break it up a lot better than what I'm doing here. Oh yeah, I can already smell it, so good. So I have about a teaspoon. And this meat may create a little more juice just because, oh no, not bad. I use 90-10, 15, 85, 85 and then 15% fat of meat is good too. You just. You just have to remember, you might have to drain a little bit of the fat off. So my meat is starting to cook. Hopefully you guys can hey, see it here. My meat is starting to cook here. And I'm gonna go ahead and add in the garlic. Okay, come on garlic. I guess it's a little bit harder for me using one hand while I hold the phone. So anyway, and that was probably about three cloves of garlic plus some small ones. Hopefully that's enough because you know me, I like garlic. Okay, we're going to get our uh, seasonings going. Okay. 
Okay, let's get our seasonings going. And tell you the truth, I'm just gonna pour it in here. So it's gonna be anywhere from a couple of teaspoons, not quite a tablespoon, but I got a little basil going on here. And if you have just Italian seasoning, that's great too. I would definitely probably use a tablespoon of that. Here's a little bit of oregano, probably a teaspoon of that. Uh, hopefully, yep, thyme, a little bit of thyme. And I am just gonna use just a couple of red pepper flakes. So just a little quick, easy pop there. Okay, my meat is almost done. And I'm gonna start putting in the, um, the sauce. Okay, where's my little I'm going to start with the uh, tomato paste first. I'm going to turn down my heat just a little bit until I get all this stuff in there. I want to make sure I get it all out of here. So yeah, tomato paste. Kind of cook the tomato paste in with the meat. Just cook it down, not cook it down, but just kind of bring out some of that robust, earthy, hearty flavor. And then it'll also help thicken up the sauce just a little bit. If you find that your sauce is a little bit too thick for you, go ahead and just loosen it up there with a little bit of water. I'm gonna go ahead and add in this whole one 28 ounce can of crushed tomatoes. I love crushed tomatoes over, I kind of tell you the truth over, um, tomato sauce because it's blended enough without it being like soup. And then we're going to go ahead and add in this is one small can tomato sauce. Okay. I don't, know, I don't think I need it, but we're going to go for it. We want a nice, thick sauce. We don't want a dry sauce. I tell you, man, I just, I thought this was gonna be a big enough pan, but barely. And then, um, oh yeah, the, the wine, I forgot the wine. We're gonna add in a little bit of wine. Just kind of mix that in. Oh. I tell you, that'll just give it so much flavor. And then I'm gonna put the lid on this. Bring it up to like a, not, before I put the lid on, I'm just gonna bring this up to a very low boil, reduce it, turn down the heat. And then let this cook for about, you know, an hour if you can, 45 minutes, but, because you want to incorporate all the flavors in the marinara sauce. And the more that it cooks, more of that tomato flavor will come out, more of the herbs and everything blended and mixed in together. I don't, we'll just taste so much better. Okay. 
me see. I don't know, it tastes pretty good, tell you the truth. This is really good uh, meat sauce. I, I like it. I'm just gonna add in just a little more fennel. Kind of break it up there. I'm just gonna add in just a little bit more of the herbs. So this is definitely, oh yeah, I forgot the rosemary. This is definitely turning out to be, oh. I guess I haven't used that. A little more time. And if you can hear it, I'll let you see the sauce here in a sec. All right, rosemary. So this sauce is definitely at Okay, while the meat sauce continues to cook, we're gonna get going on our cheese mixture, which is just ricotta cheese. I'm gonna use a fork just to mix it up, break it up a little bit. Okay, where's my salt? Just gonna put a little bit of salt in this ricotta. I don't need pepper right now. I'm just gonna add in maybe barely a quarter of a cup, just a little less than a quarter cup of Parmesan cheese. Just gonna mix that in. Okay, and I forgot to chop up some parsley, but I'm gonna go ahead and chop up a little bit of parsley And put that in the ricotta cheese. Add that little freshness, a little green color, and of course, it's an herb. It's, mm, I still love this. Doesn't have a whole lot of smell, but I still love the taste and the flavor and the smell of parsley. You know, it's not going to be like, um, you know, oregano or basil. But anyway, traditional lasagna. This is what we're doing. Meat sauce lasagna. Should I just call it lasagna instead of trying to put some fancy name to it? At least it's my tradition. I'd love to, um, here I was in Italy and I didn't even order lasagna. I was trying to order all those other dishes that I really don't either get here or I'd like to see how they make it there. I tell you, it bores me. That was really good in Italy. I, I thought um, boar ragu kind of meat sauce. It was really good. I, I, I will be the first to admit, sometimes when I get out of my comfort zone, when it comes to food, I'm afraid. I'm like, oh, boar? Like, okay, isn't that like a wild animal? How, well, probably is in Italy still. How is that gonna taste, you know? Just like here, if you taste venison, it has a flavor to the meat, and if you're not used to it, your taste buds almost want to rebel from it. But I tell you, I tasted boar ragu, I think that's what they called it. It was so good, so good, you guys. So rich in flavor, it was really good. So I'm just gonna kinda I don't, I don't want big pieces of parsley in with the um, 
ricotta. Just kind of want to mince it up, finely chop it as best I can. Kind of keep folding it into each other so bigger pieces get chopped up. Okay. Just gonna do that. Yeah, I think that's about enough. And then I just have to add in my egg. I'm just gonna kind of scoot this over here a little bit. Okay. You know, maybe a teaspoon. I, I, I don't want a lot in here. Then I'm gonna use my garlic, or my, crack my egg. Of course, I keep telling myself I should put this in a separate bowl when I crack it, but do I? Okay. There we go. Just kind of trying to And I got full fat, whatever you want to call it, not skim, ricotta cheese. I mean, we're making lasagna for crying out loud. Might as well get all the flavor you can. And it's good pasta. Okay, I think I think that's about it here. If you even wanted to, I got some shredded moths. Wouldn't that make a nice, nice little chewy? So I just sprinkled the little mozzarella cheese in here. You don't have to do that. I don't think I put enough in here to really worry about it. Okay, there we go. Okay, we're gonna continue to have the meat sauce cook over there. And in the meantime, I'm gonna tell you a little I, I'm hoping it's a trick. I've never done it before, but I've read in several places uh, online, the people I follow and stuff like that. And this is what they do uh, with their lasagna noodles. So why not give it a try? Okay. Okay, here we are. Um, the sauce is still cooking. I have my ricotta cheese mixture finished. And so now we're gonna prep the noodles. So. What happens to me a lot, and I probably went ahead and cooked the noodles just that little, you know, 30 seconds, a minute too long, but uh, you, put them in, you put the noodles in boiling water, obviously, then you try and drain the water up or you try and, you know, pull the noodle up, lay it flat and, you know, let the water drain off. But often my noodles have cracked and ripped. And I'm like, oh gosh, what a bummer. I went through all of this and, you know, and this way you don't have to use as much water, but I have four of these kind of noodles, lasagna noodles. And I know there's some no baked noodles out there as well, or no, not, not no baked, that, that's not right. Um, partially baked or ready to go lasagna noodles or whatever they're called. I don't know, I'm not exactly a fan of it. It's convenient, I think, I think it'll taste okay. Uh, but I, I just like the real thing, I guess. So I've got a pot of hot water here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna scoop in enough water to cover these noodles. And so basically what you're doing is partially cooking these. Just kind of making sure all the noodles get some water and not stuck to each other. And you let these sit, sit for about 30 minutes, 20 minutes, until you feel like they're soft enough. And then there we go. Okay, let's see if this works. If it doesn't, people, then I just ruined 12 lasagna noodles, because there's four in here. Just in case you don't have enough room, you can break one off and cover that whole pan type of thing. So, um, so yeah, we're just gonna let this sit here about 30 minutes. So when I get back here, when we get back here, cause you all are in my kitchen right now, uh, we're gonna assemble the lasagna. I cannot wait. Okay. Okay, so here is the meat sauce for the lasagna. 
I mean, I don't think I need to add water. I don't want it like too runny, but I am gonna go ahead and just add in a couple of teaspoons of brown sugar. I just think brown sugar just kind of mellows it out a little bit without tasting like that sweetness and like white sugar does. But if you feel more comfortable about adding white sugar, go ahead. But that was just about a couple of teaspoons of brown sugar just to take away some of that acidity of all the tomatoes and maybe even a little bit of onion. And if you really wanted to brighten it up a little bit, just, you know, a little squeeze of lemon juice and a little bit of lemon juice, uh, lemon zest. But of course you don't want it to taste like lemon, so be careful with that. Anyway, this is the meat sauce for lasagna. <gasps> I think it looks good, don't you guys? I can't wait. It may take you a moment to make lasagna, but with all the layers and stuff, oh, it's so worth it, especially the next day. Okay, sorry about that. I didn't want to trip over Daisy. So we got our ricotta cheese. Let me bring over, oh. Look at what happened to that noodle. I think it thought it was going to escape. I think it'll still be okay. But this just softens up the noodles just a little bit. Remember how I just put white water, white water, hot water over it? All right. Okay, so the noodles are ready to go. Because I have my notes here, I'm not sure why. We are gonna start layering our lasagna. And so I have a deep dish, nine by 13, or pretty close to a nine by 13. Let me see, I forgot to check. Yeah, pretty close. I might stick a little noodle over there. Okay. What I forgot to tell you though, is that we need to pat dry, pat dry the pasta noodles so it doesn't add more water to it. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna plate here. One day, one behind a, one at a time. But this way my noodles don't break. They're all good. The sauciness and the cheese and everything will finish cooking the noodles. Of course, this one escaped me, but I'm not too sure how that happened. Sorry about that, guys. I forgot that I had to pat dry the, dry pat. Oh my gosh, why is it that doesn't sound right? It's kind of funny. Yeah, there we go. Okay, just got four more to go. Okay, now we're ready to go. Of course, I have this in a colored pan, so you're not gonna see what I'm doing, but I think for the most part, you guys get it. Okay, here we go. my sauce over here. All right. Oh, all the flavors that we've added to the sauce, the garlic, even the hint of the red wine. 
Oh, it's just, it's rich. It's a rich sauce. And I think that is excellent. Okay, so what you're first gonna do, I got my nine by 13 pan. I'm just gonna put a little bit of sauce, maybe two big scoops, maybe more. Just so the noodles have something to sit on, but also not get stuck to the bottom of the pan. Okay, there we go, I'll clean up that mess. So we're gonna lay down our first layer. I think I'm gonna bring you guys over here so you know, I don't know how I do it, I guess. And then I'm just gonna break this up and just lay it on this half. Oops, let me do a little bit more. Okay. So here we are. This is what we're doing. We're gonna, the sauce is on the bottom of the pan. We're laying down our noodles. I don't know if you guys will see me, but I don't think that really matters, does it? And so what we're gonna do now, is that we're just gonna kind of spread a little bit of the ricotta cheese mixture all over the noodles. I'm even gonna lift this one up a little bit. I didn't wanna break it and then break the other one in half, so. Okay, here we go. Okay, there we go. I think I think that's enough because we've got a lot more to go. Okay, after the ricotta, we are going to go with the meat sauce. Isn't it funny? The first layer, you're hesitant about using too much and then you find out you've got all this extra. Okay. Then we're gonna go with the mozzarella. And all we're doing is building it up. And then we start all over again. Another layer of pasta. And if you want, just gently press it down a little bit. Make sure it all gets in there. Okay. And I'm gonna put a little bit more pasta in here. Here we go. Layer it with ricotta again. Oh boy, I don't know why this layer is taking me longer to make sure it's covered with all of that ricotta. 
goodness. So you got a little bit of melted cheese. You have a little bit of the creaminess. Okay. There we go. A little bit of the meat sauce. Spread that over. I don't know, I feel like I'm being so careful. Get in all the corners. Okay. Then what I want? Matzah. So you definitely want at least three cups. I think I might have to shred a little bit more. Okay, you guys, I'm not sure why I ran out, but I gotta do a little bit more matzah, mozzarella cheese. Okay, we're just gonna finish this off with the meat sauce. Top it off with cheese and then we are ready to go. Meat sauce will be what helps cook the noodles. Yeah, I told you I probably should have added a little more meat sauce on the bottom. So I'll have a little bit left over. So guess what? If it's just you for dinner, cook up a batch of spaghetti, add this meat sauce on it. Oh, luscious, very good. Okay, there we go. We're gonna add in, I'm gonna top it off with some mozzarella. And it helps if you have a deep dish. So don't feel bad if you only have enough to do two layers. It's still lasagna. You still got two sets of noodles, two, two layers. And I'm gonna add some Parmesan. And probably for the first 25 minutes, I will cover this with foil so it has a chance for all the steam to cook. And then uh, the last 25 minutes, the cheese will have a chance. So let me wipe this stuff off because we don't need that. Okay, there we go. Okay, there we go. Okay. Lasagna. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and top the lasagna with foil. I'm just gonna loosely put it on because I don't want the cheese to stick to the foil. So if you're worried about that, get some toothpicks, just prop them in here and it'll help hold up the foil. And we're gonna put this in a, um, about a 375 degree oven, 350, 375, depending on your oven. And we're gonna cook it for 25 minutes, take the foil off, finish cooking it for another 25, and then we're gonna let it set and rest for a minute, and then we've got lasagna for dinner. Okay. heavier uh, at 9 by 13 dish than I thought and I didn't want to burn my arm on the side of the oven so it took me for a moment but anyway so I'll see you back here in a little bit for lasagna traditional classic lasagna
It's cheesy. You get the noodles, you get the, you know, the pasta. You get this nice, rich, um, you know, meat sauce and everything. I don't know. I love the lasagna that I made. Everyone's got their own spin on it, but I hope you give this one a try and let me know what you think or what you changed up. So follow me, go to amyroloffslittlekitchen.com, make this recipe, let me know what you think, or go to my YouTube channel, subscribe to it. I would so appreciate that. We're trying to do some more things on that this year in 2023. But anyway, this is just classic lasagna. I love it. So from my table to yours, from my kitchen to yours, I hope you keep enjoying gathering around the table with family and friends. So check it out, Amy Roloff, Little Kitchen.